Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in astronomy, science, and telescope. And this time, Joey is sticking around here. How are you? Good, good boy. Because he knows it's a good name brand telescope, right? Remember what happened when we tried to talk about the Amazon six inch reflecting telescope? He flew right out, right? So I don't think he's gonna do that this time. So anyway, here's what I have here. Now this is not a new product or anything like that. It hasn't been released right now. It's a little bit of an old product. Well, not too, too old, but I just got my hands on this. This is a pre-model. So this is a Skywatcher Pro Series. So let me show you what it is. Okay, so let's take a look at this, guys. So, this is a Skywatcher 80 millimeter Equinox. Now, you guys probably are aware, let's say the Skywatcher uh, Evo Star, and before the Evo Star, they were called Black Diamond, but you guys know what the Evo Star 80 millimeter is. Uh, it's a good scope, it's a doublet, it's made with FPL 53 glass, which is considered a very good quality one. It's a doublet, so it's not so heavy. It cool down is fairly quickly. There is one little downfall of the Evo Star 80, and that's that they use the same tube, just not as long as the 100 ED. Evo Star is the, is the same tube as the 80 millimeter, and that's why it's so big and heavy. But this is, again, they discontinued it. I think it was because of the cost type of thing. So this was the same size, but of course this one is not in an oversized tube. This is exactly what the tube should be. So let's look at the rundown and look at the difference. So at the time of filming, I will put up in Canadian what the Evo Star 80 cost and it is not cheap anymore. Remember too, the Evo Star 80, whichever series you you have you know you look at the 80 millimeter 100, 120, 150, it does not have a sliding dew cap. It's fixed. Now that's not a deal killer in any way, shape or form. But it's nice that if it does slide, you can carry it in a uh, smaller package if you're traveling with it. Um, you know, to a dark site or whatever, you can just shrink it. So that part is good. So the 80 is the only one that has an oversized tube, being that it's an 80 millimeters. The other ones are the size it should be. But anyway, the other downfall that most people would probably say is that the focuser is okay sometimes, probably for visual. Now, I at one time got a bad focuser on the 120 and the 150, it was actually decent, but I know even the 150, after owning it for three and a half years, almost four years, and once I sold it, I know the new person, because he wanted to do imaging, said, you know, it wasn't as, it was starting to slip a little bit, so he had to readjust uh, the screws that are underneath the focuser. Now, depending which focuser you look at, sometimes like on this one, there's three on this side, three on that side, one in the middle, okay, type of thing. And not only that, there's a couple of screws on this side of the focuser and that side. So you're looking at probably around 10 screws to fool around with to put more friction, less friction, you know, that type of thing. So it's not always the easiest to work on those, but the EvoStar focusers are probably okay for visual, most imagers, I'm gonna say 95% at least of most imagers are going to upgrade it. Maybe 50% of visual people probably would upgrade that one too. But it's a nice scope that stood the test of times, good quality, but besides the dew shield and the focuser, the only two little issues, but most people could overlook that. 
because the optics were good. Now, this one is actually the same FPL 53. Okay, I'll shrink it. So it's, it's a same 53 glass, so the quality is gonna be great. It's much smaller uh, than the Evo Star. It's not in a four inch tube, but it's also the Evo Star is F7.5, and this one I believe is F6.5. Uh, 500 millimeters, so it's an F6.25. So in one way, it might have a smidgen of more color than the Evo Star, because that one's F7.5, F6.25. So it's just a little bit more than one focal ratio shorter, but definitely this could be, well, probably at least a third of the weight. It does have the sliding do cap like I said over here you had the focuser is totally 100% rotatable which the Evo Star one wasn't and plus this focuser here I believe it's called the long purring and this is like a medium good quality focuser now I don't see anybody upgrading even if you do imaging on this guy uh, so for visual or imaging, this focuser will be fine. Okay, and it is a, uh, I believe it's a two and a half inch. It comes with, uh, you know, so you can put a two inch diagonal here. And the only downfall on this guy is that it does only have like a Vixen compatible kind of built-in bar, like a shoe. So it doesn't have rings type of thing. So, but I guess they figured because you could rotate the focuser 360 then that would offset it being at a weird angle sometimes but I guess you could always put a bar under this shoe here uh, six or six to eight inch bar and then you could have more play to try to balance it more but um, everything else looks good the, the quality looks good so this was actually a upgraded version but it didn't it didn't stay very long and I think it was because the cost to put a much better focuser on, to have the sliding cap. Uh, it comes in a hard shell case. Now, if you buy it new, I believe it might come with an eyepiece, a diagonal, uh, that type of thing. Now, this is a used model. To me, though, the, the dew shield is actually slides a little too easy. So if you, yeah, if you just put it up, see how it falls down. Now, I don't see, there's no thumb screw or uh, anything to hold it or put more tension. I've already tried to fool around with it. I don't see there's any way. I think the easiest way is you just put an elastic band over here and that'll give it a little friction so that way it doesn't close. And then you can just move the band when you wanna close it. That's really about it. The cap here is metal. It's not plastic, so that's nice. Uh, and everything here is actually metal. The focuser is very nice, very smooth. Um, the dual speed and the single speed. This is what I would call a nice proper focus. And this, the rotation of the focuser is also nice. So it's a very nice compact uh, scope. It was better quality, but because the price, I think of it back then, they just let this one go and let everybody use the Evo Star and just focus on that. Now, this one's probably more of a plane portable. Uh, you can take it on an airplane type of thing. The Evo Star probably would be this much longer. So that's really all I have to say on this um, review. Sweet coming up is gonna be clear. I'm gonna take a look at the moon. Uh, Jupiter's still around, but it's getting a bit far. So let me see if I can get those two objects. That, that's it for part one. So this is my overview of this guy. If you ever see this guy for sale on the used market and you're looking for a nice quality 80 mil that has a nice glass portability, good focuser, this could be what you're looking for. And especially if you want something you know, with a better focuser than the Evo Star with a sliding cap type of thing, this could be what you're looking for. Also would be great uh, for astrophotography imaging as well. So 
that's it for here hopefully you guys like that uh, so far i like it and it actually i don't know how much it weighs but it actually has some decent weight you know what let me go weigh it not too bad five pounds what you see here now i guess if you put a two inch diagonal inch and a quarter adapter um and an eyepiece you know maybe it'll go to seven pounds which is still very reasonable now remember too this does not have a finder scope at all maybe you could just put a ride gel up here you know and it comes with a sticky double-sided tape and maybe that's all you really need i wouldn't put anything huge here it's only f6.25 six and a quarter so it's really not long at all it's kind of wide anyway especially if you have a, a 32 millimeter inch and a quarter eyepiece or a two inch whatever it, it's already low power but maybe a ride gel would just complete it so anyway that's it the next video like comment and subscribe if if you like this video if you know anybody getting into the hobby share my channel with them if you're on any of the forums and maybe somebody's asked about a video that I've done. If you don't mind sharing my link, that would be great. And I also do have members or Patreon members of videos. So once a month, you don't have to join at all if you don't want to. But if you'd like to help the channel, it's only 99 cents. I put up one video once a month. It's one video that I gave to any member that's on the Patreon's free Thousand Oaks solar film. That way they could... Uh, you know, be ready for the solar eclipse. So sometimes there's a little benefit. 99 cents isn't really that big of a deal. And uh, that's it. I also put your name on the description. Why not you? Why not me? Joey, say bye.